Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Uh, today, gonna be Shuttle versus Larva. Should be a ton of fun. Top left, gonna be Shuttle. He is our Teal Protoss player. In the bottom right, it is Larva, our White Zerg. Woof! Spamming a lot here. Got this replay off of Team Liquid, which is a good resource for Brood War replays, especially their forums. All right, so a ZVP here on Fighting Spirit. Haven't cast a ZVP for a while, it feels like. A lot of ZVT and a lot of PVT. But hey, those matchups are good as well. Just PVZ is my favorite. All right, so are we going Nexus first? No, just scouting. Just scouting on this giant four player map with a probe. Terror the Overlord scouting out. <laughs> Yep, I know. Fighting Spirit, you're very at home here, aren't you? A lot of grass, a lot of verdant Vespine gas you can inhale. Overlords are probably cool with that, right? They probably inhale Vespine gas and whatnot. Anyway, Probe's not going to see the Zerg because... Oh, overpooling. Because it's cross-spawn. Who scouts cross-spawn first on four-player maps? Actually, some people do. Some people do that. I don't know. They're playing the odds, man. There is no right answer to where you scout first on a giant four-player map. You just do what you feel you need to do. Follow your gut. You good at following your gut? I'm not great at following my gut. I like to follow my brain instead. Just that's, I don't know. That's how I'm built. Forge coming in in case it was a super fast pool. And this poor probe's like, uh, uh, uh. I've come so far. But in the end, it didn't really matter. Block the hatch. Block the hatch. Gets a couple early hits off. Hmm, interesting. And I don't know if the probe wants to fight this. Ooh, that's another big hit. But shields regen, as we all know. This oh man, shuttle. Shuttle, your pro micro is insane. This denial sucks. Terror. Larva did not want to do this. Larva did not want to have to delay his natural base forever. Oh, he gets it. But man, he had to make a whole bunch of lings first. He had to make a drone first. What a delay. What a beautiful delay there. Truly fantastic. And now this probe's like, well, I'll be taking my leave now, gentlemen. Two cannons. Uh, two cannons seems like overkill, but I didn't really get a... Really solid ling count, did he? It still seems like overkill. I would be surprised if uh, Shuttle here didn't just cancel one. Canceling one would be good. Come on, cancel it. Do it for me. All right. Well, I'm not doing that. What else is going on in the world of the world? Uh, ASL is happening. Ooh, by the time this posts, there will be some interesting things happening. That's for sure. So that's nice. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know. I can't really talk to you about the most recent results because I am posting this in the future. But the players that remain, there's some pretty fun ones there. Bisu's still in that thing, which is awesome. Uh, we got Soma in the mix, too. I like Soma a lot. Light could potentially, you know, get the thing done, too. He's another favorite. So all three races have their horses that they are rooting for. Beautiful, beautiful control there from a larva. No problem. No problems at all. <laughs> oh, I started watching Rings of Power on Amazon. I'm enjoying that. Well, first two episodes by the time I've cast this. I watched the first two. It's good. It feels like it's happening in Middle Earth to me. The production quality seems very good most of the time. I'm interested in where the storylines are going. That's an Amazon Prime show. Uh, I do like Lord of the Rings. I would not consider myself a huge Lord of the Rings nerd. Like, I've known people who've read The Similarian and, like, dress up as Lord of the Rings characters for Halloween. It's not me. I like it. I do. A lot of people like the Lord of the Rings movies. I have read the books, though, which puts me further on the Lord of the Rings nerd scale than most people, I think. Books are good. Like, Tolkien's a good writer. I really can't recommend them enough if you need something to read. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not modern writing. But it is very excellent. I've also started watching Sandman. It's a Neil Gaiman adaptation on Netflix. I pretty much like everything that Gaiman does. I think he's very creative. Got a lot of really good ideas. 
and just darkness. There's like a dark creativity to him, which is fantastic. I like Gaiman a lot. I really like Good Omens. That's something he did with uh, Terry Pratchett. So those like two, maybe the most, I can't say that, but two incredibly accomplished authors, right? Pratchett's kind of about silliness and whimsy and hope and life. And Gaiman's about the darkness and about death and about in inevitability and about nihilism, right? So they paired up to write this book called Good Omens, and it's great. It's really good stuff. They're both incredibly talented writers. So Good Omens is good. They adapted that and put that on, and that was on Amazon too. Is that Netflix? I don't know. Either way, Good Omens is really fun. The book is great. The book is pretty short, honestly, as Corsairs are coming in here. But anyway, so yeah, when they were like, hey, there's a new, new Neil Gaiman book adaptation on Netflix, I was like, I'm in. Like, just sight unseen. Somebody was trying to get me to watch it. They're like, it's Sandman. Like, it's about, you know, the god of dreams and, you know, fantasy stuff. And I was like, uh, I don't know. Like, it's a game and adaptation. I was like, done. Say no more. I'm in. Season tickets to that guy. Anyway, just watch the first couple episodes. I think I'll probably have it finished by the time this thing posts. But anyway, recommendation, right? Right. Okay, so Corsair out. Nothing too crazy. Templar Archives coming in. Spire not done yet. Normal stuff. Scourge will start popping soon because they're starting to build now. Also an evolution chamber. Yeah, everything's shaken up. Everything's shaken up to be a pretty solid, pretty solid match, if I do say so myself. Yeah, nothing weird here at all. There's a couple DTs on the way, which is cool. I do like DTs coming out before High Templar in this matchup. I mean, the Corsair DT pairing is an eternal one. Ever since Corsairs were introduced, maybe not ever since, because look, they both came around in the Brood War expansion. And I don't know who the first person was that was like, okay, hold on, hold on, bear with me here. If we use the Corsairs to kill the enemy overlords, then they have no detection for the DTs. Eh? Eh? And everybody was like, Corsairs are bad. They can't attack ground. There was a long time in Brutal where Corsairs were never made. The history of the Corsair and Bisu. D9 talks about that in one of his videos that he posted, I think, last year. Oh. We're just going super fast Dark Archon? I mean, like... Okay. You're getting Storm. Why are... Um... Maybe you're thinking Mutalisks are coming and you can Maelstrom storm them? That's, I mean, it's really good. This is a really fast Arc Archon, though. Like, uh, maybe he was like, well, I would have made DTs, but there's Hydras protecting these overlords. So, like, that's not happening. Yeah, I mean, you can rush Corsair DT pretty effectively, but once the Zerg player's got just oodles of Hydras protecting every overlord on the map, and especially defensively, just it's not going to happen. So, yeah. We get some Maelstrom! Hey, hey! Look at the camera. Look at the camera! You're the talent! You can't put your back to the camera. It's actually an old-timey, like, stage production thing, is you never turn your back to the audience. Uh, my ex was a big-time musical theater person and opera, too, so I learned a lot about that world, I can tell you that much, for 13 years. But yeah, definitely, you can turn, right? But if you're turning to talk some to somebody next to you, don't turn all the way. Just turn, oh, just open up a little bit so that the audience can see you, but also they can tell you're talking to the person you're talking to. Look at me. Look at me understanding theater and stuff. Look how well-rounded I am as just a human being. So this third base is in trouble for shuttle all of a sudden. It's a lot of speed lots, though. I don't know about, okay, never mind. It was trouble. Now everything's fine. These lings are going to die. They don't have adrenal yet. The zealots owned the zerglings right up until the point adrenal pops out. And then the lings trade exceptionally well. Yeah, this is not working for Larva, man. Not at all. Dude, this egg needs to be canceled. It's going to die. Come on. Come on. Oh, he lets it finish? Oh, he wants these eggs to die instead. Get this one. That one's easy to kill. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Okay, good. This one, too. We have upgrades. Plus one's going to help a lot. And then this lurker shows up, and it's going to get stormed. It's not a big deal. We're just taking spines, though, huh? Does he want a storm? He has a storm. He's like, we can be patient. Well, the third base comes up. Everything's fine. Bit of a ling lurker pressure, maybe into the natural base. He's like, oh, this seems pretty well defended. 
Oh, yeah. Cannon. Oh, good cannon placement there. And then tries to bust in. Then there's Psionic Storm. And then the Dark Archon says, I'm going to watch this battle intently. I could have cast a Maelstrom there, but it was unnecessary. The cannons and the Psionic Storm did their job. This is where... <laughs> Larva's like, um... Hey, what's up? There's Dark Archons out. Weird. 14 drones at a time being produced by the Zerg. Okay, all right. This is definitely attempted as murder shuttle before, I don't know, Reavers start coming out with the shuttles like this. Oh, that's a Corsair. Not a shuttle, actually. Yeah, pushing in here when there's cannons and there's two High Templars sitting there waiting for you. Not great, but getting it up this ramp is not really going to work out all that well either. I don't think this High Templar is ready to rock, boys. By that I mean Shuttle's not storming them yet. There we go. Ow, ow, ow. You have another one? Yes. Get him. Get him. That's good. That's good. I don't know. The Hiders are still pumping in here, though. But the Dragoons are out. Ah! The Dragoons trade really well against Hydras. Honestly, they do. This full energy Dark Archon sure wants to get involved in this battle. So Shuttle hangs on to the third base. No problemo. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. There's a Hive on the way, though. And there's a lot of Lurkers out. And there's not any Dark Swarm. So there's a window here where Shuttle's just going to be able to crush everything in his path. Because maybe the Dark Swarm was delayed a little bit. The Hive is not done yet at 11 and a half minutes. This fourth base trying to come up here from a Larva 2. Shuttle might send some units down to deal with it. I mean, killing the fourth base is pretty good. But, you know, losing this fourth base would actually buy some time for Defilers to come out from Larva 2. So, yeah. You basically accept your fate here. Try to kill as many Protoss units as you can. Obviously... But I really think this is sacked, right? I mean, yeah, there's a spore here. It's sunken down, Ling's dying, storm one, and shot to kill the other one. By that I mean not doing that. We've got our, interestingly enough, we've got our Maelstrom here. Against Lurkers and against Zerglings and a couple Hydras. Okay. All right, that was fun. Okay, but no, seriously, did they must have sniped the OBS and the Zerg player sniped the OBS. Okay, fine. Why are there two overlords here? Are they dropping stuff? I don't know that they are, though. Look, Adreno's on the way. Oh, no. Larva says, who needs defiler mounds, Falcon? I certainly don't. I am awesome. True. You are awesome. Observer getting in here soon would be nice as well. Yeah, trying to get up some sunkens down here. Not... Not really going to work out, I would say. Not so much. Not so much. Yeah, Zealots are dying, but they're taking Lurkers down with them. These Sunkins are popping, but, uh... Yeah, no, these are plus two Dragoons and plus two Zealots. Sunkins are going to die. Ling Wraparound on the backside seems pretty effective. Wow, a lot of Zerg is coming in. Dude, Larva's able to defend this fourth base a lot more effectively than I thought he would. The Lurkers are all dead. This one Archon trying to morph in. Not happening, son. 112 to 79 supply right now. Uh, uh, fighting, pushing, pushing back, reinforcing another Dark Archon coming in. Wait, is that the same one? Uh, I don't think... Wow. Maybe it's not... I don't know. I don't know if it's the same one. See, the Zealots are like, These Lings have Adrenal now. They're mean. More Lurkers positioning up here. This fourth base dying would be huge. Game-changing stuff here. If this base died, where's the OBS go? Okay, OBS is here. Lurkers are dying. That Lurker trying to take as many Zealots down with him as he can. It was one. I think it was one. Again, more Sunken's going to die. More Creep Colony's going to die. Zealots eating up handful of Lings. If you outnumber the Lings, you're okay. Oh, making a beeline for this fifth base. Left side here, too. Look at Shuttle. Shuttle's taking a fourth at the same time. And these lings are dead. Okay, one's dead. The other one runs for it. Yeah, dude, focus this hatch down. What are you doing? Like, I, don't think, I don't think he knew this was here. He was like, wait, I'm going to run up here for safety and then be like, oh, okay, yeah, it's dead. Super dead, man. Upgrade's good. Forcing a cancel on that base is so massive. 
so, so, so massive here. 138 to 87 supply. This does not bode well. This does not bode well at all for the Zerg player. Shuttle is looking mighty fine here. Where is the Dark Swarm? Is there okay? Defilers are out. I mean, Defiler Mound exists. That counts for something. Lings killed nothing, although they tried to get that High Templar, which would be nice. This hatch survived. Look, the fourth base for Larva is still here, which is good. Fifth base getting replanted. Not the end of the world for the Zerg player. Consume. Oh, man. Is consume late? Boy, howdy. Boy, howdy. You can't be late with consume in this matchup against someone who knows what they're doing. And someone who knows what they're doing is like an underselling of shuttle to the extreme. Maybe in some zealots back home just in case this happens. Oh, that's so, so, so good. And then marching into the third where there are no sunkens. <gasps> there are no sunkens here at all. The third base needs to have sunkens. Yeah, putting them all at the fourth base, though. Oh, I get it. I get it. I do. But that hurts a lot. Ling's pop just in the nick of time for Homeland Defense here. Storming the ramp so that the Zerg can't get up here easily to defend his own. Oh, there is a... Wait, was that a sunken? No, that was a defiler. And these are lurkers that are dying, too. And this Dark Archon needs to cast something before you die, buddy. Oh, the really? It's an interesting transition into Archons here. Out of Larva. It doesn't matter. They're out of Shuttle. Larva taps out in 16 minutes, and Shuttle is your winner. Yeah, man, just late. Just late on stuff. Late on the Defiler Mound. Late on the Consumability. Late on the Dark Swarm. Shuttle's decision to go into Archons here when there is really a lot of Hydra Lurker out is questionable. Hydras are the answer to this mass Archon stuff. And it's a handful of Zealots that are already previously injured. It's not a big deal. So interesting choice there. But yeah, great pressure. Great pressure. Defended his third base very well. The Lurker showed up early. Wasn't quite ready for it. Delayed, delayed, delayed. More Zealots came over. Pushed the Lurkers down the ramp. Bought time for cannons to get up, and that helped immensely. Never lost anything into the main base here either. And the small attack into this fourth was not a huge deal. Hmm. Well, fair enough. Dark Archon play. We got Archons. We got regular Archons. We've got a uh, plus three for the gateway. Uh, the gateway units here. Reavers were coming out. Shuttle speed here. And yeah, losing your third base while your opponent is on a fourth base. That is not, not so good. Oh, I want to check what... Check what the upgrades were for Larva here. Yeah, hit that like button if you enjoyed that. Protoss fans are probably pretty happy about that one. No upgrades for the Hydras. Or for the Lings, rather. Gosh dang it. The Hydras have plus one and plus two. So they're not, you know, killing it on upgrades here. It's plus two with plus three finishing. Wow. So plus three finished here in like the last ten seconds of this game. That's funny. Hey, plus three's arrived. Woo! We're doing 40 or 39 damage per shot. Oh, yeah. These lurkers. Just nothing. No answers here at all. Yeah. If you enjoy Zerg players getting massacred, this is the game for you. Bam. GG. And GG. Well done. Just very well defended, I would say, there from Shuttle. Got the right tech out, and Larva was just a bit behind his game there. So 118,000 points for Shuttle, 93,000 for Larva. Outproduced, woof, 2 to 1 ratio outproduced. The Zerg player did. That is, that's crazy, but this kill-death ratio makes up for it for Shuttle. 258 to 86? Yeah, so if you get outproduced 2 to 1 by your Zerg opponent as a Protoss, get this kind of kill-death ratio. It's like almost a 3 to 1. Almost, which is crazy. And then resources, yeah. If you get out-resourced by your Protoss opponent, you're just not going to beat them. It's not going to happen traditionally. So very, very well done. Very, very well played by Shuttle. But what else do we expect from this dude? Like, seriously. Who? <laughs> uh, what else do we expect, right? It's Shuttle. He is excellent. And yeah. That's going to be it for me. This is going to be Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead 
hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.